Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador, with another episode. I know it's kind of like, woo, we're doing our quilt sew along, which is so much fun. If you've missed the last couple of episodes with Wendy Chow, we're doing a sew along from beginning to end, and this is episode three. So let's welcome Wendy, and we'll give you details on how you can go back and watch all of that. So in the meantime, we are streaming on Brother Facebook and YouTube channels. Leave your comments, questions. We always love to hear from you. Wendy, how are you? Hello. I'm very well, thanks. Angela, you oh, it's sound... so nice to see you. Yes, you sound so much better this week. I'm assuming you got over your cold that you had last week. The last time that we were on here? <laughs> oh, yes. I feel like a normal person again. So high five to that. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, then at least we're up for more sewing then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to keep sewing this quilt. I'm absolutely loving this project. You're turning me yeah. into a quilter wannabe. Yeah. Well, I mean, I hope it inspires you to take it up and not just you, but everyone else that's watching it as well. Um, and I do hope that, you know, with this particular project, it's, uh, you know, it's you know, suitable for all skill levels. So anyone can really join in. You just really need to know the basics of how to operate a sewing machine and you're on your way. Um, so over the last uh, couple of episodes, uh, Angela and I have been taking you through um, just some of the, the basics behind how to quilt. Um, so actually the project that we're working on, and I'll kind of slide my chair away, but we are creating this big, nice and big throw size uh, quilt. It's a very bold geometric um, design. I call that uh, geometric jewels sampler. And the reason why it's a sampler because we are working on various different techniques, uh, piecing techniques and quilting from strip piecing. Let me just point out which particular blocks. I know it looks like a bit of a jumble right now, but it's very cool and you'll see how all these blocks come together but uh, we've got strip piecing we've got flying piece quick corner units we've also got um, quarter square triangles as well as split quarter square triangles and um, half square triangles so lots of triangles going on and that kind of leads me into this week's uh, topic that we're going to cover um, but I'll quickly just show you more of a close-up of the overall design because I know that when I slide my chair you're not actually seeing the whole thing and you can kind of get an idea. Oh so beautiful I every time I see it I, I love it even more especially the colors I absolutely yeah. love it. I notice it matches the um, the dress that's on your mannequin today as well. <laughs> Oh, let's see. Oh, yes. I told you it's like one of my color favorite colors. <laughs> <laughs> like, how'd you know? <laughs> so this is the overall design. Hopefully there's not too much glare, but this is the overall design. And um, the dimensions from memory, it's, okay, 30, 63 by 72 inches. So again, it's a really nice size for your couch or you just want to brighten up like any space within your home. Um, so yeah, so this week we are on our third uh, week where we'll do half square triangles, um, but we'll also cover um, some of the things that we'll be working on in week four. So um, we're combining those two weeks together in this one episode. Um, so this is the half square triangle block that we're going to be creating. So half square triangles is this, imagine this like sort of quadrant here. Um, that is one of the basic building blocks in um, quilting. So this, this is one of the blocks that we're creating. And then in the next week, so week four, we'll be creating um, split, no, so quarter square triangles. And then we are working on split quarter, squ split quarter square triangles. <laughs> so those are the three <laughs> blocks that we are going to be working on. Um, and they all kind of, and the reason why I've kind of combined these two weeks together is because when we work on these two block, two different blocks that we're working on in week four, so the, these last two blocks that I showed you, they kind of all both start with um, the foundation of um, half square triangles. And there are a number of ways in creating half square triangles. Um, so in this particular pattern, there are, we're working on two different methods on how to create half square triangles. The first method um, that I'm gonna show you today is um, eight and one. So you're gonna be creating 
eight half square triangles in this one go, which is really quick, really speedy. One of my favorite techniques. And then we're going to use, uh, we're going to explore um, two in one half square triangles uh, when we dive into these two blocks at the um, in the next week's ta set of tasks. So um, I think let's move on and let's get going on making these first this first block here, the um, half square triangles eight at a time. So I've actually prepped a couple of squares in my, on my desk. So I'll switch over here. Uh, I'm going to scroll to the half square triangle section of the pattern and I'll bring it up here so you can kind of see it. So it's on page six and seven. And if you haven't downloaded this pattern, it's a free pattern. And again, it's uh, free to join as well, um, this whole quilt along. So you can grab the pattern from my website um, at the dash weekendquilter.com. Anyway, so uh, we are going to pick up, um, so we're on page six, oops, page six and page seven. So I'm going to pick up um, A2 squares. So if you had uh, joined me in the first episode, we would have created all these different fabric labels uh, to to keep ourselves organized throughout the- Hey, Wendy, um, I just have yeah. you stick your head back just a little bit. We just- Oh, um, yes. <laughs> I can't about that. Yeah, thank you. Your thanks hair for looks reminding great, me. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, so yeah, the, I, if you joined me in the first episode um, when we were cutting up the fabrics, we were um, we we're also label labeling the fabrics as well, um, just to make it easy for you to keep track and organized throughout the whole entire project. Especially when they were uh, there are some cuts of squares that have very similar dimensions. I don't want you guys to get mixed up, so that's why I've labeled them. So um, this first step in the half square triangle, the eight at a time method, we're gonna pick up um, A2 square. And we're gonna grab that. And it also asks for a, a, two, a two square and a C2 square. So I'm gonna grab this one as well. Cool, all righty. So we're gonna do this. Oops, okay, I'm just gonna move this aside. So I got my A2 square. And that first step that we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the guidelines, the sewing guidelines. And um, I've got a fabric pen um, here. So just make sure when you're marking your guides, you're using a um, fabric pen or a pencil. So then that way, those guides come out if you're um, once it's in the wash. So I'm going to do two diagonal type two diagonal guidelines. So I'm going to draw the first one here. Hopefully you can see it. Can you see it? Let me know if you can't, and I'll switch to a different fabric pen to so that it kind of pops yes. up a bit more. It's kind of, yeah, it's super, super light. Okay, let me just switch over the pen. I like, I, I normally use that pen that I just used because um, once you apply heat on it, it comes out, which is one of my favorite things. All right, so hopefully you can see this one this time around. How does that look? Is that better? Much better. We can see that beautifully. Yay. I was a little bit worried because it's like purple on purple, <laughs> but I'm glad that that worked out. So now we're going to draw the second uh, diagonal guideline as well. Um, so it's really handy to have a long quilting ruler at this point. All right. So let me put this cap on before I start drawing all over my fabric, even though it can come out. <laughs> all right. So we've done this and now I've got the, um, this orange square and I'm going to place this piece on top. I'm going to line it up. And the reason why we place the marked square on top, because then we're going to follow those guidelines uh, to help us out with sewing. So I'm going to pin this in place because we, we like this. And I kind of, when I'm pinning these, I like to kind of um, pin it so it's sort of parallel to the 
guides, but not too close because um, they might get in the way as you're sewing. They don't have to be like completely perfect, but as long as they help hold the thing in place, and I'm just going to stick another four pins. I'm going to shift this. All right. Oops. Okay, so when we're done pinning with this, we are then going to sew two diagonal guidelines that are like a quarter inch away from a quarter inch away from that drawn line. So essentially, it's well, you can see it. So I'm going to be sewing a quarter inch away from this guide here and a quarter inch away from this guide. And we're also going to do the same thing with these other two diagonal guidelines. So in total, you're going to be making four seams. So I'm just going to bring this over and kind of give you a bit of an idea. Um, bring you over to the sewing machine, kind of give you an idea of how it looks like uh, when you sew that. Because I know it might seem a bit uh, confusing when I talk about it. So um, I am going to briefly move my camera. All right. While, so you're, um, while yeah. you're moving that, I will just remind everyone that if you missed the last two episodes, you can go back on Brother's YouTube channel or their Facebook page and scroll back to find episode one and two. And also, there's a newsletter to sign up for, and we will leave a link below. And also, you can go back to those shows to find that, and then you'll receive email notifications throughout this whole sew along, which was a great idea, by the way, Wendy. Great idea. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we're over at the sewing machine now. Um, and then, so I'm going to, right now when I turn on my machine, it's gonna default as um, the needle position in the middle. So I'm gonna change it uh, so that it's gonna be a quarter inch. Um, so on my BQ3100, the Quilt Club series, one of the awesome features on it is that it allows me to um, just change the needle position so it's a quarter inch seam allowance with a touch of a button, which is awesome. Um, so hopefully I might just move my machine, machine a little bit and hopefully you can kind of see it. So I'm just going to move this down and it's under the utility stitches here. Um, so right now I know it's the straight stitch middle. I'm just going to hit this 1-29 um, and that will take me to piecing stitch right. Um, if you had missed out on the first, oh no, the set last episode, I show you how to find three ways in finding your quarter inch seam allowance if you don't have that functionality on your sewing machine. And I also explain the importance of quarter inch seam allowances and uh, scant quarter inch seam allowances. But anyway, so now that we've got the quarter inch seam allowance, um, so that's going to be a quarter inch from the right edge of this, um, the needles a quarter inch away from this right edge of this presser foot, I'm just going to uh, lower the presser foot so it matches the, so the right edge of this foot matches up with the guide that we first drew. Um, so I'm just going to lower it and then I'm going to stitch away. And then uh, when you're piecing in quilting, you don't need to like reverse and reverse stitch at the start and the end either. So I'm just going to start sewing. So you can see that the, the presser foot edge on the right is always aligned with this um, purple uh, guide. All right. And then I'm just going to cut this and look my press foot up. So I've done my first seam. Hopefully it's a bit tricky with this flopping around, but hopefully you can see this. Hang on, let me just get this wool pressing mat and it will probably get, make my job a little easier. Can you see this now? That's probably a bit easier. Um, oh you can yeah, see that we can first. see that great. Yeah, so you can see that first seam that I've done. It's a quarter inch away from that uh, guide that I just drew. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, um, but I'm gonna, so when I put this on the sewing machine, I'm gonna flip it over this way and I'm gonna sew 
a quarter inch away from this that first central um, drawn line. So I'm just going to quickly do that. I think I'm going to use a wall pressing mat as my uh, my helper today because my blocks keep flopping around. <laughs> your, your extra hand. <laughs> yeah. Should just do that going forward. So you can see again that as I'm sewing, I know it's like so therapeutic about quilting. You just go ahead and start sewing. But um, again, I, what I did was I lined up the right edge of my presser foot with this purple guide. And we know we talked about the needle position. So we know for sure that that needle position is going to be a quarter inch away from that right edge of that uh, presser foot. So I'm just going to keep going. Um, Right. I'm going to cut this. So I'm going to get my handy dandy wool pressing mat again. Um, so you would have seen that we've done two parallel um, seams away from the that central seam there. Well, I've actually prepared a um, another book that prepared. A little sample so we could kind of skip ahead and I'll show you how it looks like when I've done if you'd imagine so once I've done these two um, seams here I would also then so two seams away from quarter inch away from this uh, purple guide so I've done I've got this other example that I've done prepared earlier I've actually ironed it so that you Unfortunately, the purple guides are actually gone away from it, but you can kind of get an idea. It's like this cross in the middle um, with two parallel lines. That looks great. Yeah. Nice pressing. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to um, actually going to readjust my camera so you can kind of then have a better bird's eye view because now that we've done all the sewing for the um, this half square triangle, uh, these half square triangles, um, I'm going to show you how the cutting works and then how you get those eight half square triangles, which is pretty cool. Okay. After with four seeds, just four seeds, <laughs> you get eight half square triangles. I'm, as soon as she has her camera moved, I will bring her back. She, she just doesn't want you to get seasick. You know the, you know the routine, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what it's like when you're working with me. <laughs> So I, I just have adventure. a question for yeah. everyone watching because I'm not a huge quilter, but I'm beginning to really love it. It's just something that you is so fun to do and you don't have to do the fitting, which is kind of nice. But I, yeah. when I'm looking at that right there, I would have thought that you would have to sew every single little piece together. You're making this look so simple, Wendy. Yeah, well, you can sew every little piece together, but I mean, it takes a little bit of time. Um, so... There are some shortcuts, which makes it really fast and it makes it more enjoyable. I'm actually just going to go, go in and draw those guidelines back in just to help you kind of visualize where the themes are relative to those uh, guidelines. Um, but yeah, no, uh, when I first started quilting, I did not know any of these shortcuts and I would be spending hours and hours just cutting each individual piece and each and sewing each individual piece as well. And I think, um, I think like one of like I did a queen size quilt. This was like the biggest project, my very first big project I did. I think I cut over like a thousand squares. I don't know what got into me, but it took me six months to complete that quilt. <laughs> so um, I'm sharing, you know, some of the basic um, and sort of like you know um, shortcuts to make your job a little bit easier and make this whole process more enjoyable so you have a final product to actually enjoy. All right, so I've prepared this earlier. I drew these guidelines back in so you can kind of see where the seams are relative to the guides. And now we are ready to cut this, um, these into eight half square triangles. I've got a rotating cutting mat um, and it just makes the step a little bit easier. Um, you don't have to have it but you'll see why I like the rotating cutting mat in this, at this point. Anyway, so I've done this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut, um, a, a, cut a line in the middle of the, um, of the 
these the square. The guide and also um, the where the um, I'm going to use the horizontal edges here as well as a guide. We lost you for one sec there, Wendy. I'm sorry. I oh, was no. muted because I didn't want to bother you. So you're back, but you just need to back up just for a second because we lost you for just a couple seconds. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Um, sorry so about now, that, everyone. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, so now we're ready to cut. And so we're going to use the uh, where the seams here, these two here, as well as where the, um, what was it, the guidelines intersect as a guide, as well as the horizontal edges, again, as a guide to make our first cut. So this is gonna be the central cut. So I think this looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to get my rotary cutter. And again, we covered this in the first episode. Remember when you're handling the rotary cutter and the ruler, you wanna apply pressure on your non-dominant, uh, with your non-dominant hand, apply pressure on the ruler. And then uh, with your dominant hand, use the rotor cutter and then cut away from your body. So we did the first cut and then carefully lift the ruler at this point. We don't want to like shift and move the pieces. So this is why the rotating cutting mat, it comes in handy. And then we're going to do the same thing and we're going to cut um, another central line here. All right, so we're going to use those where the seams, these two seams intersect as well as the um, what was it? the drawn guides and then the horizontal edges as a guide to help us with the placement of the roller. So we're then going to do the same thing and cut. So we've done that. So we've got four squares, but now what we're going to do is we're going to cut on the actual guide. So I'm going to move those out the way and we're just going to cut on this purple guide that we created and cut away and I'm just going to repeat and do the same thing and these triangles once we unfold them those become our half square triangles at all You'll see this magic trick in a moment. All right. So we've done that and we're going to just press, like unfold and press, press these in place. But yes, this just simply with like four seams, you have created eight half square triangles. Super quick. So we've done that. So eight half wow. square triangles. Like how fast is that? That was really fast. <laughs> yeah, so it saves so much time. So instead of cutting these individual like triangles and then sewing each seam, so you would have had to sew eight seams to create this, you've done eight at a time, which is crazy. <laughs> and you wouldn't have had to cut all these individual triangles to make these half square triangles. You would have just had to um, cut two squares and done that. So I'm just going to um, press this and then I'll show you how to trim it because um, trimming is pretty important because that's how you're going to get all those edges nice and um, all nice and nicely lined up. Hang on. My iron is playing up so I'm just going to plug it and unplug it. I've been making my iron work hard. Anyway, so when we are pressing the half square triangles, there's two ways in pressing. There's no wrong or right way. Um, you could press to the dark side. So I, when I press to the, actually either way, I like to, um, either method of pressing, I like to press the seams in place or like set the seams. And that gives it that more nice crisp kind of uh, press. And when you're pressing, you hold it down for a few seconds at a time versus actually ironing like an, a shirt. And the reason why you press is and not iron is so that um, it doesn't distort the actual shape. And also, um, and especially with like these triangles, sometimes they are cut on the bias. And when they are cut on the bias, they're more prone to get distorted if you use that um, sort of 
applying your shirt motion. So I'm going to fold this out and then press down. So this is pressing to the dark side. No wrong or right way. It really comes down to what you prefer. So I've done this first one here. And then I'm going to press open as another way to kind of just show you. So I, if you're not sure, I'd encourage you to try both ways and see which one you prefer. Um, so I'm going to press open with this one. And you press it down for a few seconds. So this is how it looks like when it's pressed open. And this is how it looks like when it's dark side. So I'm just going to like move this up close to the camera so you can kind of see the difference. So that's pressed to the dark side and this is pressed open. So whichever way you prefer, there's no wrong They right both way. look so good, Wendy. So I'm just curious, everyone watching, uh, do you prefer pressed open or pressed to the dark side? What's your favorite, Wendy? Well, so I started liking, I started off with pressing to the dark side. I went through a phase of that and then I went through a phase of pressing open. And then now I'm going through the phase of pressing to the dark side. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, so I go through different phases. And again, there's no wrong or right way. And then sometimes I kind of mixed up a little bit just depending on um, what kind of block I'm working on. I know it sounds really bad, but. Um, so don't call the quilt police on me on this one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now we're going to trim this half square triangle up. Um, and I'm just going to double check in the pattern to make sure what size do I trim it up to. So I'm going to just skip ahead and go to step five of the pattern. It says trim each HST, which is half square triangle, into a five inch square. So we're going to do that. Um, so when you have a quilting ruler, uh, with this particular part, I encourage you to use a quilting ruler that has a 45 degree angle guide because we're going to use that di um, diagonal guide as to match up with um, the diagonal seam that's running across in the middle there. I'm actually going to quickly grab some tape to kind of help you uh, visualize um, this next step a little bit better. So we talked about we're going to trim this particular step of this square into five inch. So I'm going to use this uh, handy dandy painter's tape here and I'm just going to, oh no, I just read out. Hang on. Here we go. I'm just going to tape this little corner here to help indicate where five inches is. So I've got five inches going down this way and I'm going to do it on the other side, so horizontally. So essentially I want the square to be this big. Hopefully you can kind of see it. I'm, I'm, you, I don't normally use tape here, but I use tape uh, just to make you help, uh, help you kind of visualize it better. Anyway, well, I'm just going to pull this a little bit, readjust it. Sorry, my head might be in the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so right now I'm going to just match up my ruler um, with this diagonal guideline that's running across here with the seam in the middle. And I'm going to make sure that this five inch square kind of sits within this um, this block here. So I think that looks great. I know it's a little bit tricky, but there's a little bit like a slim thing that we're trimming, trimming off. And then what you do is again, use your non-dominant hand to hold the ruler down and then you just cut away. And I'm gonna cut the right edge and the top edge. And when you're trimming this bit, you also kind of get rid of the little dog ears as well of the uh, half square triangles. And then I'm going to like rotate this around and then do the same thing. And again, I'm going to now use um, the ruler. And then now that we've done the hard work of matching up that diagonal guideline, I'm not going to worry so much about that. And I'm just going to really focus on making sure that um, the I've used these clean edges that we just trimmed uh, and match that up with the five inch. Um, guides uh, going vertically and horizontally. And again, I can use that tape and match it up with that corner. So it's five inches from this clean edge there, five inches from this clean edge at the bottom, and then trim. And then there you go. So you've trimmed your first half square triangle. And you're going to keep doing that 
um, until uh, you just keep doing that until you've done all the half trimming of all the half square triangles. And then when you're done with that, then you just sew four of them together. So you've got two of the orange ones at the bottom. I've actually done some preparation ahead and I have trimmed, I have, well, not trimmed, but I have done these other ones here. So, and careful when you are putting the half square triangle blocks for this particular pattern because um, there are two different ones and they're mirroring each other and hopefully you can kind of see that in this pattern. So there's two different half square tri triangle blocks at the very end and they're just mirrored. So I prepped this before, so I'll just have to rotate this and then rotate this and then sew these together. This is the mirror version of that, but you combine it and that's the first block, the first half square triangle block. So there. All right. Your points look now so. Move on. Your points look so perfect, Wendy. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> it's a lot of just a lot of practice and just takes takes time. But um, I mean, I'm sure you can achieve it as well. Again, you know, things like just trimming the blocks to size, and you know, ensuring that you're following a quarter inch seam allowance, unless the pattern says like different. Um, throughout the whole entire project view. That's how you get those seams, um, you know, nicely in those points as well. And again, make sure you press as you go. Because pressing as you go it will also help out with getting those points and seams, everything lined up, all nice and pointy. So, yeah, that's, those are my tips <laughs> on getting those seams and points together. All right. So I think we're ready to move on to the next block then. Okay, so we're moving on to the next block and we're looking at um, this really cool uh, quarter square triangle. So if you know how to make half square triangles, you'll definitely know how to make this quarter square triangle. Um, so in this case, we are uh, looking at, if we're looking at the pattern, we are focusing on page, the bottom half of page seven, and then all the way to page nine. So uh, the pattern asks for A4 squares. So I'm gonna dig into my little tray and find square A4. It's a bit crazy right now with all the blocks we just did. Right, back in my little tray. Okay, so we got A4. I'm gonna make sure that I stick this back on because otherwise I don't want to get confused or lose these blocks. I mean, cut up squares. I meant. I'm just gonna move this aside. So I got one A4 square, and I'm gonna just jump ahead and look at page two and grab a B2 square. All right, cool. So for, to make, to start off on this um, quarter square triangle, we're gonna make two, we're gonna use the two at a time half square triangle method. So I'm gonna use this A4 square again, grab my long quilting ruler and my handy um, fabric marker. And I'm just going to mark a diagonal guideline going down the middle of the square. So very similar to what we did with the first, with the eight at a time half square triangles, but we're only going to make one diagonal guideline. So we've done that. And then I'm just going to grab my B2 square, which is this nice gold color. This is actually one of my favorite colors. And I'm going to put this purple on top. Again, we want to put the marked um, square on top because we're going to use this as a guide, the drawn guide to help us out when we are sewing. So again, with um, the pinning, um, just, I like to kind of use minimal pinning. So I'm just going to use four pins and I'm going to pin it parallel 
to the drawn line on both sides of the drawn line. Okay, so we've done that. I'm going to move my pin out the way. And then we're going to do the same thing again where we're going to sew a quarter inch seam away from the um, that central drawn line. So we're going to do two of those seams going that way. So it's like two quarter inch seam allowances away from this purple guide. So I'll quickly show you how that works again. And then I'll grab my examples. So I'll quickly just change the camera view so you've got a better view of my sewing machine. All right, so you're going to go for a little adventure. <laughs> <laughs> While she's moving that around, be sure to, again, ask your questions and everything. I'm just, I love this. I'm, yeah. I think I'm going to have to design an entire piece of fabric of these little quilt blocks. This is so, you make it look so easy. If you saw the skirt I made a while ago, Wendy, you'd be crying laughing. <laughs> that you know what? It's kind of given me a little bit of idea now that I'm revisiting this pattern is to go on my, um, my Art Spiro app and then upload the sort of outline of the blocks and then put it on my sketch and then do a quilt label of it. I'd be like thinking about Ooh. it for the last couple of days. <laughs> So that would look good. Yeah, so maybe next in a future episode, maybe I could show that to you guys. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have my actually I'm going to switch out my little bobbin because I'm kind of running a little bit of that. So I don't want to run out of it midway. By the way, do you guys preload your bobbins? Because I kind of like to do that and then keep out this top little compartment or inside here. Do you do that, Angela? I'm not as good at it as I should. When I'm doing a big <laughs> embroidery project, though, then I will because I want to make sure I can just keep rolling. Yeah, I actually was recently thinking as well because now that I got the sketch machine, is actually used if I'm when I'm not using it, and then I'm sewing, I could actually just use the sketch to load up my bobbins and then come back here and then continue sewing, or will not even continue <laughs> sewing. I will be sewing while the sketch is working. Good anyway, idea. So, yeah, it is a great idea. <laughs> um, anyway, so I have this ready. I'm going to sew um, a quarter inch away from this purple guide that I drew. So what I'll do is I'll line the right edge of this presser foot and um, start sewing away. I feel this is like so therapeutic. Like I don't... Like, I don't have to like think too much, which is so nice. <laughs> and I'm just gonna cut the seam and then I'll show you how it looks like. Once I've just sewn this, use my handy wool pressing mat so you can see I've just sewn that diagonal seam, that first seam, and it's a quarter inch away from that drawn line. So I'm gonna flip this over around the other way and then just repeat on the other side of that guide. So I'm gonna quickly do that. And then we'll show you the magic trick after here. Okay. I feel like I'm a magician with this cutting. Right. Hey, Wendy, what, um, you're on the Quilt cool Club machine. What number is that one? It's so quiet. Really? It's uh, the uh, three, the 1300s. Oh, thanks. No, 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 not the 1300s, the 3100. 3100. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you had the three and the one right. Yeah. <laughs> I was very close. <laughs> All right, I'm going to quickly switch the um, camera view again. So you got the overhead shot of my desk. Oh, no, I've got my numbers mixed up. <laughs> So by the way, we haven't asked everyone today in case they've been following along. First of all, have you been following the sew along? And two, uh, in case you forgot to tell us last time, what colors are you using for this? Because I love the one on your wall, but I'm a huge pink fan. So I was looking at my shirt today. I think pink and black and white would be a really good looking Ooh, quilt. Oh, yes. That would be great. <laughs> that would be really, really nice. All right. So I've done that. And then now we're at our desk. I've got my rotating cutting mat. Um, I'm actually... Let's see, I'm going to rotate it. So actually, I'm going to take this cutting, rotating cutting mat out of the way. Anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my long quilting ruler 
and I'm going to cut on this purple guide that we drew. So let me shift that a little bit. And then I'm just going to hold the ruler down, cut away. There we go. So you split this in half and you have created two very big half square triangles. So that's how you create two at a time half square triangles. Um, I'm going to actually, I've actually prepared two half square triangles already um, here. So I've got this gold one that we just uh, created and this one's all nice and pressed. And then the pattern also requires you to cut, uh, uh, to create a half square triangle as well with this sort of uh, orangey and purple combo. So similar to the first one, the example that we did. Um, so, so I've got these two and then now I'm going to pick up this gold one here. I'm going to flip it backwards. So the wrong side facing up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my long ruler again and I'm going to draw a guide. So I've got my handy dandy fabric pen and I'm going to draw the guide going diagonally um, so that it's, I think it's perpendicular. I think that's the right word, perpendicular to the seam. And don't draw it, and don't draw it going that way. We want it this way because you'll see why in a little bit. So I'm just going to line these corners up and then draw my guide. All right, so we've done that bit. Now it's the pinning part. So I'm gonna grab this. And this is gonna go at the bottom. With this, these two blocks or these two half square triangles, I've kind of pressed the one side and I press it to the pur this purple side. And the reason why I like to press it to the one side for this particular block is so that when I do put these two half square triangles, so the right side's facing each other, so that's right side facing up. The right side is on this side, so the wrong side's facing up this way, so I can see the guy. But anyway, so when I lined these two half square triangles together, so it kind of looks like this, and you kind of have a little preview of what's to come. Um, I like doing this, we'll, we'll have the seams pressed with one side, because then they kind of like click into place. So I think, that feels pretty good. So these are all lined up and I kind of like shift it and feel that, oh yeah, these two seams are kind of like clicking together. And I'm going to just pin it and do the same thing. Actually pin it this way because we're going to do it parallel to the guide. And again, this next part is very similar to what we did at the start where we also quarter inch two quarter inch seams away from that purple guide. So that's what we're going to do. And you can make sure that um, before you do so, make sure that you have the half square triangles um, matched up the right way. So right sides together, but also that the purple and purple are opposite to each other. So again, it's kind of like the nice little preview into the final block. So kind of like this. This is the final block and that. So that's a way to make sure that you've pinned it correctly. And um, I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and then um, just sew those two parallel lines quickly. Oh wait, hang on. I, I can't see you, Angela. Hang on, you're oh, on mute. Can you hear me? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I tried yeah. to mute myself in case, because the heater keeps turning on. Um, so, I have to say something. When you were showing that, um, the last piece that you're using, when you first showed that when you came on as being a non-quilter, I looked at it, I could not figure out how you're going to get those <laughs> little points in there. And then once you show how easy it is, all of a sudden the light bulb goes off and it's like, we're just making a bunch of squares basically yeah. Yeah. and dividing it up. But, but I mean, when you look at it though, for me, I, and I love math. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love this because now it just makes so much more sense instead of yeah. trying to figure out how you got those little points in there. <laughs> yeah, it's like a whole sort of magic trick thing. I'm not gonna. I'm yeah. I'm not gonna move my camera this time. Um, I'm just gonna sew away, and we could chat while we sew this way, that way. Um, it saves me time from actually having to 
move my camera around and sure. uh, show you how that last cutting bit works. So, um, but again, like I mentioned and demonstrated in the last kind of two examples, you sew um, a two quarter inch, you sew um, two seams quarter inch away from that center guide that we drew. And I'll show you in a yeah. little moment when, we, when I'm done with this. So, um, I would love to know for all of you watching, are you a quilter, number one? And two, if you're not, this has to be a huge eye awakener. Just of the way that you're designing this, I mean, my mind is going right to designing fabric. And I think that this would be so much fun. So, yeah, no, once you start sewing and then start cutting and then seeing the results, it's so exciting. All right, so I've just sewn my two seams. Very speedy. <laughs> That was and very gonna, fast. And I'm just going to hold it up on the screen so you can see that. Let's see. So this is that purple, that purple guide that we love. This is that purple guide that I drew. And then these are the two seams that run parallel to uh, side by side of that, um, that guide. So I'm going to switch back to the camera, the desk camera. And I'll show you this fun, exciting bit. This is always the exciting bit. I love this part. Um, so I'm going to remove these pins, get these little guys out the way, grab my ruler, and I'm going to just going to cut on this seam here. And this is the exciting part. Oops. All right, are you ready? Ta-da! So we wow, we've done this block. So we've done two of these. So you, you've saved time. You did two at one really, really quick. So instead of cutting those four individual triangles, you've just cut two squares and then you sew them together with just two seams. Actually, no, more than two seams because we would have had to um, make the half square triangles. But um, if you combine these two, if you combine two half square triangles, so two seams in the middle and you get this. I'm just going to quickly press this in place. And then once we're done with this, I'm going to quickly show you how to trim these into size. And if you know how to trim quarter square triangles, then I guarantee you, you would know how to trim the next block that's going to be coming up. So I'm just going to press this and open this up. I don't know why I did two. I just needed to do one. <laughs> a bit of an overachiever today. <laughs> All right, I'll do the first one. Um, so we've got the this beautiful split quarter square triangle, but we're not quite finished yet because we've got to trim it. And when you're trimming, it's great because you also get rid of these little dog ears in the corner. So I'm using my really, really big quilting ruler because we want this final... Um, square or this quarter square triangle to be um, nine and a half inches big. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to reuse these tape thing because I just ran out of painter's tape and I'm going to move this out the way so you can see it. So it's nine and a half inch square and that's nine and a half inch square. So I'm just going to tape this down here. I got, yep, I got that right. I'm just going to take that here. May have a little bit more tape because I'm going to show you another. We're going to use this next bit here requires a little bit more measuring and lining things up. Whoops, I'm just going to. I was going to grab this other tape instead. <laughs> I know. I will. Uh, I'll so take you off for one sec because I was like, <laughs> the no, whole table awesome. was shaking. We got no, it. We'll we just want to make sure okay. she want to make sure you were awake. That's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm your like afternoon coffee. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and I'll keep these aside. All right, so I am um, got my stuff out. So I'm going to get this block here. So we're going to make this. Uh, nine and a half inches big and 
Again, you want to use a ruler that's got that uh, 45 degree angle guide just to help you out so you can match that up with this diagonal seam that's going across this way. So I'm going to put that on top of that. And then again, so we also need to, so you line this up 45 degrees here. And then in addition to that, you want to make sure that um, the square is sitting within nine and a half inches as well. So this is where this bit comes in handy. So nine and a half inches. Then there's another third part that you kind of need to measure and line up and is this is to find the central point of this whole entire block. So we know that um, nine and a half divided by two is four and three quarters. So we're gonna use the four and three quarter guide to help us out with lining up this central, I'm gonna bring this back, this central middle middle point here. It's, it sounds complicated, <laughs> but I'm gonna use tape to help you kind of visualize it. So um, I'm gonna measure um, four and three quarter inch from this edge. So that's about here. And I'm gonna measure four and three quarters going um, from vertically. So you can see this corner here basically needs to line up with the central point where all the seams meet. And then this nine and a half inches need to sit within the square. So I think this looks pretty good to me. Hopefully my head's not in the way. So kind of get the idea. So the central seams need to match up with the four and three quarters mark. And then everything sits within the nine and a half inches. And also again, the 45 degree angle going across. And you could also use the points where these seams meet as well and use them to match up the nine and a half inch um, guides as well. So I'm just gonna cut these two. So I've got to cut to the right and the top edges. And then I remove this. And then now that you've done all the hard work in getting those different, you know, points in the, um, on the ruler, I just got to match the nice clean edges, the left and the bottom edge with the nine and a half inches. You know, Wendy, that tape is really a really ingenious idea because I could see how easy it would be to just kind of look at that and go, oh gosh, where's the number again? It just, it just makes the thinking process nil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can, you know what, you can keep this on if you want to, and then you could use that as you're cutting. So it just makes it easier for you. So you know, for sure that you, you, you know, you're going to get the right measurements. Um, obviously you need to be sure to always change it if you have to use a different measurement to cut out. But I did this for this particular purpose to make it easier for you guys to kind of visualize it. Cause I know there's like a lot of guides going on here. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we have just done our uh, quarter square triangle, which is, that's the second block. And this block we are gonna cover is the fourth week's task, but I kind of fast forwarded a little bit and jumped ahead with that one. Okay, so. Uh, we're going to now move on to the split quarter square triangle, which is this one. Looks like this. And the reason why it's a split quarter square triangle, if I put the two and two together, you can see that there's this, this giant big uh, red triangle kind of covers up this half of the half of the um, qu uh, quarter square triangle. So that's why it's split up um, or it's split. And then now what I've done here is to create these two quadrants. I actually used, um, I did uh, the two and one half square triangle method. So I'm gonna pick up D2 square and I think I'm gonna use it A4. Let me just double check the pattern again. So we're going to fast forward to page nine of the pattern, page nine. And we're looking at page nine to halfway 
page 11 of the pattern. So that's what we're doing. And um, so it says A4 square. So I'm going to start with that. So again, it's using the same method as kind of like the first one or two steps of the uh, first two blocks that we created. I'm not going to actually sew it, but I'm just quickly show you. So I've got the A, kind of quickly remind you. So I've got the A2 square, the purple square, and I'm going to get my long quilting ruler and then draw a diagonal guideline. So I've done that. And then grab my uh, D2 square and then place the A2 square, so the purple square on top, line it all up, and then you pin it in place, and then we're just gonna sew those two guides, and then we'll cut, once you're done with that, you cut down the middle, and then it creates the two half square triangles. So I've actually fast forwarded this part. I don't wanna bore you too much with too many half square triangles. Um, so I've actually prepared this half square triangle already. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the quarter square triangle where we flipped this um, the wrong way. And then we're going to draw a guide and grab this handy pen again. And I'm just going to draw a central diagonal guideline. And again, with the central diagonal guideline that we're drawing, it's going to be going the opposite, the opposite direction of the seam. So you're drawing like an X with the seam as a guide. So you can see this giant X in the middle. Yeah? Okay. And then now, once we've done that, I'm going to introduce this red square again. And I'm going to put this on the bottom. So the right, the right side is facing up. I know it's a bit tricky to see because it's a solid fabric. Um, so right side is facing up and then the right side of this half square triangle is going to touch the right side of that. So essentially it's right sides together and lay it flat. And I know that the back um, square is a little bit bigger. So just try to centralize it. You don't have to match it. As long as it sits within that red square, we're all good. And then now what I'm going to do is pin these in place. So I'm going to place these pins parallel to that drawn line. And I'm going to take you back to the sewing machine shortly. Actually, I'm not going to take you back, but you kind of get the idea. But I'm going to sew and then I'll show you what happens. Um, so again, we're going to sew two seams that are a quarter inch away from this central um, drawn guide. And once I'm done with that, I'll show you the magic that happens with this one. All right, I'm gonna quickly hop on my sewing machine. Cool. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't see that then, because I, I nearly missed my chair. You wouldn't have wanted to see that. But yeah, let me quickly sew this. I'm okay, Wendy, this. I'm dying. What just happened? I just heard something fall. <laughs> I like nearly missed my chair just then. <laughs> Do not. I don't know. I don't know if you got that, but I nearly missed my chair. <laughs> yeah, do not fall off your chair. Hazard of sewing, hazard. Yeah, don't try that at home, please. Just don't try that at home. <laughs> we don't want to have any accidents. It'd be so embarrassing. It would be. All right, does anybody have any questions for Wendy? Any comments? Are you following along with this quilt so along? And uh, by the way, happy National Quilting Month. I keep forgetting, it's still yes. there. Yes, I know, it's a whole month long, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't always forget. I mean, although one month goes by so quickly, like I don't believe how quick the year is going by already. All right, so I've just sewn those two seams. So you can see that I have this, whoops, it's kind of hard mirroring this. Oh, I'm having a moment right now. <laughs> I think the chair kind of set the tone. 
Um, so you see this purple diagonal guideline, and then I've just shown two seams that run parallel side by side of that. So that's all we've done. And then I'm going to flip back to the screen and we're going to, uh, the other camera events. Hi, I'm Lucy, but I think I need coffee at this point. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to cut on this um, drawn line. So you're going to use your long quilting roller. Apply pressure with your non-dominant hand and then cut away with the rotary cutter. You may need to like go through that scene a couple of times, but also if you have a sharp rotary cutter, you'd be able to do that. I haven't up changed my blade. So anyway, so now we've done that, you've got these two. I'm gonna flip it over and then you're gonna open this up and then you're gonna press to the dark side or open, whatever way works. And you'll find that there's two different blocks that come out of this. Um, they're pretty much the same thing, but they're just a mirror of each other. So that's how it looks like. And then if you look at the pattern, it will also require you to create two of these blocks. So that's how it looks like. So I'm gonna give this a quick press and then I'll show you how to trim up this um, particular block and again uh, like I mentioned earlier if you know how to trim up your quarter square triangles you're going to be able to or you will know how to trim this one up too so I'm just going to press to set the seams and then open this one up and then press down All right, so we've done this. I personally find that trimming up the split quarter square triangles is easier compared with the quarter square triangles because I feel like there's kind of like one less kind of point that I have to, to worry about. But I'm gonna flip it this way. And again, I'm gonna use this big quilting ruler and you're gonna have to use your quarter, 45 degree angle guide on the ruler and you're going to match that up with this central seam that's going down the middle. And again, we're going to make this uh, trim to be nine and a half inches square. So I'm going to move this out of the way. All right, so we're going to firstly, I'm just going to do the basic thing and just line up this 45 degree angle with this seam that's running down the middle. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to make sure that it's sitting. Actually, I'm going to match this central seam. So the central seam with the very middle. So with the four and a three quarters guide here, because nine and a half to divide by two is four and three quarters. So that four and three quarters guide has to sit where all these seams meet, which is this tape here. So I'm just going to shift it a little bit. All right. I think that looks pretty good to me. And then again, the um, this whole fabric square needs to sit within nine and a half inches because that's how big the vinyl square is going to look. So I'm just going to no, whoops, shift a little bit. You may need to like move it a little bit here and there, but I think this is pretty good to me. And then you uh, apply pressure with the on the ruler of your non-dominant hand, rotary cutter, and then you cut the right and the top edge. We'll do that and then when you're done with that we're going to do the same thing and we've done all the hard work of matching up all the different guides on the ruler so all I'm going to do is going to use these two clean edges the one on the left and the bottom and then match it with the nine and a half inch guide that looks pretty good to me and then I'm going to just do the same thing so Cut the right edge and the top edge. Cut that little bit. That's got it. And there you go. So that's that square done. So you just repeat that. Make sure that these other ones are pressed, trimmed, and you're all good. So we've done three different blocks today. We've compacted two two weeks of work in the one wow. video. So we've done 
the split quarter square triangle, we've done a quarter square triangle. I'm going to actually just show you all three of them. Hopefully you can see it. Hopefully the caption doesn't cover it. And then That looks I've so done. good. Thanks. And then we have done, let me see. Let me dig around for the half square triangles. <laughs> the suspense. Oh my gosh, the suspense. And then we've got half square triangles. So we've done these three different blocks um, today. So this wow. is for week three, and then this is for week four. And again, the reason why I've combined these three blocks together, because we used half square triangles as the sort of foundation, the building block there, and um, created these three very cool, very bold blocks that will be used for your geometrics, geometric dual sampler. So yeah. Unbelievable. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those episodes, Wendy, that people are going to be, have to go back and watch. So don't forget, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to Brother Sews. And also, if you're on Facebook, be sure to follow. But you can go back and watch these over because this would be one that you watch, hit pause, watch, hit pause, watch, hit pause, so, so you get it right. I mean, it's great to have video instructions to go with the pattern. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And also, like, I've included photographed um, examples as well on the Brother Sews blog post that goes with each of these weeks, as well as, um, again, the diagrams in the pattern, the free pattern you can download from my website, um, which is on the bottom of the screen there. Um, that also helps break down the steps that, again, I 100% agree with you. Like, video kind of, like, I'm a very visual learner, and video always helps me out. <laughs> Yeah, I am too. So don't forget about this. You can go back and watch. Sign up for the newsletter if you're still watching this during the live sessions. That's still there. But you know, the best place to probably go is brothersos.com. Go to their blog. You can find everything here and all the replays as well. So if you're just popping in, you're not missing anything. Well, you have, but you can go back and catch up. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. Well, Wendy, this was over and over. <laughs> this was awesome. So Give us a little tip. What's what's in the next session? Oh, the next session, we are going to do um, flying geese units. Again, another, more triangles. Um, I might actually give you a little sneak peek into how that block, um, that upcoming block that we're going to be working on. Oh, we like sneak, sneak peek. peek. So here's the sneak peek in the next block that we're working on. So these, Ooh. let me get my wall pressing mat again. <laughs> Just that so looks easy. really difficult. Oh my gosh, it's so easy. So these um, are flying geese units here. This like sort of triangle. So this is one sort of flying geese, another flying geese, and another flying geese. So this is again like another one of these like foundational building blocks in quilting. So we're going to cover that in the next um, in the next video. So uh, yeah, and there's a bonus project as well. Um, that I will share with you all. <laughs> oh, we love bonuses. Yeah. All right, until next time, everyone, happy sewing. Keep up with your quilt sew along. You've got lots to do before our next live. And uh, Wendy, I love the tutorial. Thank you so much. Thanks, till next time. Bye. Bye everyone, happy sewing.